Okay, this is not clickbait. Mixmaster J over at MF has decided to provide the community with a nice little gift. MF item number 3317X2, the original motor oil. We're gonna give you the history on this today, why this particular red is what makes it so special. And even though you can't get this red anymore, we're gonna give you the current recipe that exists today so you can make the revised version of motor oil in your own bait shop. Let's get into it. What's going on all my fellow bait chuckers out there? My name is Michael, welcome back to the channel. And yeah, you read the title right, today we are gonna be breaking down the actual recipe to make the MF motor oil. And surprisingly enough, you probably have all the ingredients that you need right now if you've collected any amount of MF colors over time. It actually is kind of an astonishingly simple recipe and kind of can't believe I didn't stumble on it before, especially seeing as I was trying to reverse engineer the, uh, the ooze color previously. But uh, in any event, we are gonna dive deep into the motor oil recipe today. Now, we're gonna do a quick shop update first because it's been a minute. So for those of you that wanna jump straight to the recipe, fear not, I have all of the chapters linked down below in the description. Feel free to scroll down, jump ahead to the recipe. I totally understand if you don't wanna sit through the shop update. But we've got some really cool stuff to show you. There's a lot that's been going on here at the Bait Chuck and Bait Shop, as well as with 8-Bit Baits and new products coming and new products that have launched and there's a lot going on. And it doesn't matter how busy we get. The dogs are just plain lazy, both of them. Yep. All right, so right off the bat, you can see we got a bunch of new molds in. Super excited to get to all these in future videos. Today, I think we're definitely gonna focus on the 4.1 inch whip wad. This is relatively new to the Epic Bait Molds and Marling Baits collaboration lineup here. 4.1 is great. This is a downsized version of the 5.4 inch whip wad that I've been asking for for the longest time. Gotta be honest, a little bummed there was no hook slot, but that's okay. We got lots of cool different ways to rig it up. We are gonna cover all that later on in the video. Don't you worry. But this is our mold of choice today, the 4.1 inch Epic Whip Wad. And moving over here to the workstation, you can see that we gotta get this stuff moved. Our order finally came in from Kyle over at Fishing All Out. Took 11 months, but we got ourselves a nice supersized hot plate along with an air vise. Can't wait to put all of this in combination with the shooting star. Yes, you know what that means. There are going to be bait drops on the way. So let me get this moved real quick and then we can keep rolling. Okay, got that moved. These boxes over here contain something a little bit special on their own too. Packaging. <laughs> Yeah, wait until you check these out here, huh? Look at that. What do you think? Nice little QR code here on the back. Huh? Yep, I think it looks pretty good. So you know what this means. Bait drops are gonna be incoming. We got the shooting star. We got the air vise. We got the hot plate. We are ready to do some production. I am super excited about that. In these bottles here, we got our four ounce and our one ounce jars. These are gonna be for the mica shift powders and the highlight powders. You've heard me talk about those a lot in the past. We've done all our testing and now we got one, two, three boxes of powders just again, waiting to be bottled up. We got our powder packing machine right here. So we're gonna be getting into bottling our own powders and everything right here. Two giant boxes. These are all filled with, you know, lids, containers here. So all set to bring you guys more products in addition to the, uh, the pixie dust and the rupees that we just launched. 
And a huge shout out to everyone who has made the launch of the Pixie Dust and the Crushed Rupees a huge success. I can't thank you enough. I know I've been lacking on the videos. We are going to try and make that right. But yeah, the Pixie Dust, the newest member of the 8-Bit Baits Arsenal, borosilicate powder, awesome color shifting powder. A lot of these are two colors. Some of them shift into three, but much more affordable, a third of the cost, even a little less than a third of the, uh, the hollow shift powder over here. So thank you everyone for that. And we even have some new products on the way. Shout outs to the team over at Atico. These are the frosting spatulas that I use. And so uh, this is the large king size here. This is the size you're really gonna wanna use right here on the smaller four inch right there. A Tico stir stick, so finally set up as a distributor. We'll be selling these on the website soon, along with those beautiful mold mats right there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Nice cloth mat. Now you've seen me use mouse pads in the past, and I'll be honest, that's really all this is, is a custom mouse pad. I like to call them mold mats because I like to demold on a nice cloth surface. I don't like the molds banging around, breaks down the sound, it's not really loud. Everything slides around nice and easy. You're not gonna scratch and goof up your molds. I know, I know it's bougie, but you know what? I was able to get them at a real inexpensive price. So again, we're just trying to bring you the best value possible. So we're gonna be selling mold mats, not only in cloth form, but check this out. Check this out, huh? Huge, oversized silicone mold mats as well. Yep, both uh, silicone and cloth coming in two different sizes. Uh, this right here is 16 by 36. So extra large, extra long for those large work surfaces. We have a smaller size in the cloth and the uh, silicone as well. This is a 14 by 24, and I've got the 14 by 24 silicone mat set up over here at the workstation, and uh, this is what we're gonna be using today. These are some early samples I got in, and we'll get into videos about these later once they launch, but I mean, just so nice to have a surface where everything is gonna prevent your cups from sliding around, they stick, your molds aren't gonna fall over when you inject them, just, a lot of people use just baking sheets right now. Well, here's a chance to get some oversized ones to fit our workspaces and our needs as bait makers. So super excited to be bringing you all of these new products in the future. But for right now, let's dive into this motor oil. All right, before we get into the motor oil recipe, I encourage everyone, please, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this type of content. And please, please smack that thumbs up button because we're trying to hit a goal of 500 thumbs up for this video. Why are we trying to hit that 500 thumbs up? Because Mixmaster J has promised me that if we can get the motor oil recipe video to 500 likes, then he's gonna go ahead and share the recipe to make the infamous MF Blue Craw, the OG Blue Craw. So what do you say? Let's get this video to 500 likes so we can have a Blue Craw follow-up video. Speaking of Mixmaster J, you all are probably wondering like, is this some kind of gimmick? What's the whole point of this video? And I know you've already been a few minutes in here. This is, this is not a gimmick. The reality of the situation is that, you know, Mixmaster J, he's getting old. And uh, him and Mrs. T, they don't know how much longer they want to work. And, uh, you know, he doesn't know how much longer they're going to be doing colors. They made the move from Texas to Oklahoma, uh, and they are still moving colors and what glitter they have left over. But uh, outside of colors, you know, Mixmaster J doesn't think they're going to be doing much else kind of moving forward. And again, like I said, he's not sure how much longer he wants to even do this. So. When I heard this, I was having a conversation with him and I actually offered to purchase the motor oil recipe. I was like, I will buy that from you. What is your price tag? Because I would love to bottle it up and sell it under 8-bit baits. I mean, who wouldn't, right? Well, he actually refused to sell it to me because Mixmaster J wanted to give it out for free. Yep, and that's right. He wanted to give it out the motor oil has caused such a craze since uh, Chris Jones's original video, I think three or four years ago. In fact, I will put a link to that original motor oil video in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. It, 
it, it caused a run on motor oil like you wouldn't believe. And the funny thing is, is this color was actually a mistake. Uh, this was a mistake. Uh, Jeff was mixing up a batch of wrong stuff back in the 70s when he was just a kid. And, uh, you know, the secret ingredient to all this, the Jelly Red, the original Jelly Red, back then this was a couple hundred dollars a gallon. And uh, that ain't cheap because this, you know, uh, screw up of a formula wasn't like, you know, in a cup of plastic. We're talking like, you know, 50 gallon drum size mistake here. This Pops was not happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So the color actually wasn't even that popular. Like a lot of people thought it was an ugly color. The people at MF, they all thought it was kind of an ugly color. It did all right through the 70s and 80s and, you know, 90s. So enough for them to, you know, keep it going and make different batches of it. But it wasn't really until about three years ago, Chris Jones did that video and it just exploded. There was a run on motor oil. Everyone was trying to get their hands on the original bottles. Then there was a couple different revised versions, but everyone, you know, people complained that the, well, the revised version wasn't really as close to the original like sauce that everyone wanted. You know, everyone wanted that OG, that deep red motor oil. Well, that red comes from this right here, the Jelly Red Firetail. This is item number 3328, the original 28 Firetail Jelly Red. Now, like I mentioned, this actually wasn't even one of the primary ingredients in the motor oil recipe. Firetail was actually an ingredient to this color right here, 3306, the original number six purple. Hard to see here because it's just bleeds everywhere. It's bleed through the plastic bottle and it's, you know, covered up the label. But this is number six purple because the actual recipe for motor oil is a 50-50 ratio of MF's purple and MF's transparent chartreuse. Yes. I, you are probably as stunned as I was when I first heard that. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This this is the recipe? Yeah, this is the recipe. And it was the jelly red, right? The fire tail jelly red that was mixed into the purple and that's what gave it just that special sauce. So nowadays to make up for the loss of the jelly red since they don't make this dye anymore and you can't really get the OG purple anymore. Now what we use is the MF Transparent Fluorescent Chartreuse. We use the uh, number six revised purple, and you can take the number 10, 3310 strawberry, and add a couple drops of that. So what I've been doing here is typically 50-50 ratio of transparent fluorescent chartreuse and purple, and then adding you know a few drops of the strawberry. And the recipe that I came up with, well, I'll throw it up on the screen, and I encourage you to use this as a starting point because again, the recipe I was given is the straight 50-50 ratio and add red to your liking. Um, Jeff mixes these on a you know large scale. We're trying to break it down into cups. So my recipe to get you all started at home is 30 drops of the transparent fluorescent chartreuse, 30 drops of the MF purple revised edition, and 10 drops of the MF strawberry. Now, it does work with both the non-bleed and the bleeding version of strawberry, but the original bleeding version of strawberry is about the closest thing in the MF lineup right now that will get you close to that jelly red. So, we're gonna do up a batch, all right, using the original colors here, the transparent fluorescent chartreuse, the uh, purple, and the jelly apple red, and then we're also going to make a second version, the revised version, using the same recipe, but with the colors you can get today. Now, I already know a lot of you are starting to ask, well, you know, what about lure works? I don't have MF colors, so you know, I gotta make this out of lure works colors. Okay, don't worry, I got you covered, okay? Cool your jets. If you're gonna make it out of the lure works, now your ratios are gonna be a little bit different. I highly recommend going easy on this first color, the chartreuse dye number 107. This is very, very, very strong. You only need about 10 to 15 drops of the, uh, the chartreuse dye, and that might even be a little too much. For a purple, a nice dark purple, you're gonna to wanna to use black, grape, amazing dark purple color. It's gonna help brown out that motor oil for you. 
and then the cherry red dye. Again, only a few drops. I'm, I'm talking like two to three drops, if that. Start with one. Again, these Lurworks colors are highly, highly concentrated, especially these dyes, but these are the three colors that I recommend to play with this ratio, and this will get you pretty darn close from my experimentation. All right, here we are with a fresh cup of Plastisol, all ready to go, heated up to temperature. And, you know, to start things off, I mean, we have to kick it off with the original MF motor oil, right? I mean, we need a kind of a base to go off of to compare the recipes to. So we're going to go ahead and start off with uh, 30 to 40 drops. All right, we'll get you down close here. We got 35 drops. That's what we ended up going with there. Three, five. All right, look at that. See? All right, so when you stir up the motor oil, you can see it's got that kind of transparent fluorescent chartreuse green in there, but you also got that brownish red look when it gets thin. And again, that's the beauty of the motor oil. It goes from green to red to brown. Awesome looking color. There it is, 35 drops of the original MF motor oil. Let's see what it looks like inside of a mold. Okay, and here we go. Right out of the microwave and the vacuum chamber, fully degassed, ready to rock. 35 drops of the MF motor oil. Always remember, don't forget to glove up. All right, let's take a look at what these baits look like here. In the original MF motor oil, again, this is the 4.1 inch Epic Whip Wad, a nice downsized version of the Whip Wad. Now, I'll be honest, I've already been fishing with this a little bit. Fantastic mold. I mean, the Whip Wad is a fish catcher, as you all know. All right, we got one left. Yeah. Oh, took a little bit of the skin with us there. Can you tell it's a cold mold? And there we have it on the edge of the injector. You can see that brownish red coming through on the tips. Just what motor oil is known for. Absolutely fantastic. All right, who's ready for a demold on our nice new mold mat, huh? I know I am. All right, here is the motor oil in the 4.1 inch whip wad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, do you see why I chose the whip wad? Huh? It just shows color so beautifully. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is motor oil. I mean, just look at that. You get that fluorescent, chartreuse kind of green. You get that brown, reddish motor oil in the belly where it gets thick. That kind of red Coca Cola, root beer style color. Just absolutely phenomenal. Such an awesome color shift, I'm telling you. All just with pigments. Look at that, huh? Is that something else or what? Wow. All right, take a look here in the belly, okay? We can get the proper lighting on it here. You can see where it gets thick and right where it starts to get thin again, you're gonna get that red shining through. Right here. Can you see that right there along the belly? And when this thing is rolling through the water, that thing is flashing like crazy. And this is just the top down view. The belly up view from a fish underwater, I mean, you got this translucent reddish green bait coming through the water. I mean, look at that. Translucent reddish brown. And then it gets green as you get down here. I mean, just a phenomenal color. This is why the original motor oil is just so special. I mean, look at that. Just incredible. Yep, awesome stuff. All right, let's get these laid out on our cookie sheet to cure, and then we will go ahead and make the recipe now with the original ingredients 
kind of not mixed together already. So as if you got your hands on the three original ingredients, that's how we're gonna try it next. All right, here we go. Fresh cup of Plastisol right out of the microwave. You can see we still got lots of bubbles in it, but that is okay. Now, I wanna start in first with the original Jelly Red, mostly because I've never poured this color on its own before, simply because of how expensive it is. So, we're gonna start with 10 drops, the same as if I was making this recipe with the strawberry. All right, now I'm only going a little bit because, ooh, look at that, look how pink that is. Goodness gracious. I know there's already some red inside of the purple that we're gonna be adding in, so I uh, don't wanna add too much, but there you go, the original fire tail jelly red. Look at that, absolutely wonderful, huh? Okay, well, next up is gonna be 30 drops of transparent fluorescent chartreuse, and we'll also put 30 drops of the purple in. All right, let's get this blended in here. All right, ooh, look at that on its own. Look at that, huh? A weird orangish to yellow, crazy looking pink lemonade style. Changeable right there, huh? All right, last but not least, 30 drops of the original purple. All right, this is where all the magic is supposed to happen. Yeah, and look at that. <laughs> we have a heavily red saturated motor oil because we did add that extra red in there, mostly because I just wanted to see what that jelly red looked like on its own. But there you go. You can see the, the brown reflection on the knife as we pull it up. Yeah, really cool. Here's another angle of it here. You can see that red, that heavily, it's a lot more browner, more red than the original motor oil because we added that extra red into it. But you can see very similar on the output there. That is cool stuff. So yeah, I mean, if you have original transparent fluorescent chartreuse and you have original purple, that is it. Just those two ingredients, 50-50 ratio. That's going to give you your MF motor oil. Crazy. Crazy how simple that is, huh? Unbelievable. All right, here we are. Fresh out of the vacuum chamber, all degassed, ready to go. You can see a very, very reddish brown on the tip of the knife there. All right, homemade motor oil with an original ingredients in the 4.1 inch Epic Whip Wad. Yeah, you can see a lot more brown because of that extra red we added. I bet if we would have just left it alone, it would have matched up pretty darn perfectly. But I really wanted to see what that jelly red looked like on its own. More pink than I had imagined. But uh, interesting, yeah. Look at that, another amazing motor oil nonetheless. All right, and here we go. The first version of the recipe using original ingredients. Let's see if we can get these all to come off on one side. There we go, huh? Woo -wee. Look at that. That has got a lot more red in it, that's for sure. You can see it in the tails, especially. It really pops. I think the green is probably a little more vibrant too, just because it's freshly mixed. I mean, that bottle of original motor oil has been sitting for, gosh, who knows, 10, 15 years probably. All those colors having a chance to uh, migrate together, if you will. Look at that though. Ooh. Absolutely love that red in there. Yep, definitely a more vibrant green. You can see when we stretch them out here, that red comes through in the thin sections, for sure. Definitely more on the red side, less on the brown. The tails, as it gets thin, definitely has that brown in it there. All right, so to compare here, we have the original motor oil here on the left, and then the recipe we just made here on the right. 
Now if I zoom in, you can see the tail definitely is a little bit darker red, for sure. And I think that comes from the extra 10 drops of red we put in. Again, I think if we just did the 50-50 transparent fluorescent chartreuse and purple, it would have matched up perfectly. The greens actually look pretty much the same, actually. Now that I'm looking at them side by side, that is it. That, that is the original green. Now, if you look at the top, the original motor oil here, it definitely has that light kind of brown, that root beer color to it. But when we look at the, uh, the one we just mixed with that extra red, that red just comes out a little bit darker, almost has like a maple syrup kind of vibe to it, right? So that's what adding that extra red will do. And you can certainly see in the tails, right? You kind of have that clear yellowish tail right here in the, uh, the original motor oil versus the kind of more brownish red tail that you get here with the extra red that we added. So original ingredients propped up next to the original motor oil. And uh, there you go. That is the recipe. Purple and transparent fluorescent chartreuse. Who would have guessed? All right, well now let's take a look at how we can make it with the ingredients that are openly available to us today. All right, and here we are with another fresh cup of Plastisol straight out of the microwave, bubbles and all. And we are gonna go in on our motor oil recipe using the ingredients that are available today. So up first, transparent fluorescent chartreuse. This is what we used for the original recipe as well. We're gonna go with 30 drops. All right, and there we go. And you can see that gives us a real bright, transparent fluorescent chartreuse. Such an amazing color just on its own. An awesome tail color, awesome belly color in gill style beige. Just, just all around awesome. Next, we're gonna go in on the purple that's available today. This is the revised purple. You can tell because it has the RV for revised at the end of it. So we're gonna go 30 drops of purple. All right, and mixing that in, I mean already, just that 50-50 ratio, we are pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. All right, next we're gonna red it up just a little bit. We're going to be adding some strawberry. This is the non-bleed version. Now you can go up to 10 drops, and I'll show you, we'll start with five, and I'll show you what five looks like, and then we'll work our way up to 10. Now see, the thing with red colors is that red can go a long ways very, very quickly. So if you're not careful, the red can really overpower. So you see that right there? That's just five drops. And honestly, I think I may change the recipe at the front of the video because I know I verbally said 10, but I think five drops is it. I don't think we want to go any more than that. If we come down here and we take a look at this angle, you can see just that five drops already puts us pretty extreme into the red category. We probably could have gotten away with just one or two drops. Directly from Mixmaster J over at MF. I'll tell you, brother, I can't thank you enough for this gift to the community. This is, uh, this is really going to allow people to tweak the motor oil to their own liking. I know there's a lot of people who say they don't like there's too much chartreuse in the revised version. Well, now you know what's in it, you can kind of cut back. Maybe use 10 drops of chartreuse to pull back on that green and uh, you can add more red, take away more red, add more purple, but there's your ratio right there. Start off with 50-50 and uh, take it from there. It's good stuff. Let's see, uh, let's see what this looks like in the mold, huh? All right, here we are. Fresh out of the microwave, all vacuumed out, degassed, ready to rock. We have the recipe of the motor oil that uses the ingredients that are available today. And let's not forget to glove up. Here we go. I'm curious to see what this looks like. 
on the edge of the mold now that we can compare it to the original and this definitely looks like a more red version as well so that was just with five drops of red and I bet you we could go even less I bet one or two drops would probably get us very close to the original again Jeff says to add the red to the user's liking so that is the kind of you know magical blend if you will top those off yeah there we go and here it is on the end of the injector kind of a nice in between actually compared to the last two it's not super red it's definitely heavy on the brown side compared to the original but it doesn't dip over into the red too much so yeah I don't know Maybe the five drops is where it's at. Pretty cool nonetheless to be able to tweak this recipe finally. Such an awesome, awesome color. Okay, and here we are. The final demold. The recipe of motor oil with the ingredients that we can get on today's market very easily. Well, relatively easily if you can get your hands on some MF colors. Ooh, and there we go. Hey, this this is a nice balance here, huh? This may be uh, my favorite right here. I mean, I'm just saying, look at that. I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, you've got red throughout all of the tails. Nice, solid reddish brown throughout the bellies. Not overpowering at all. That green goes real dark. At certain angles, it pops. And you still get that red in the tip there. I mean, I don't know. That's looking mighty fine right there. Mighty fine. I am liking that. What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section below, huh? I mean, how can you go wrong with motor oil? You know what I'm saying? All right, comparing it to the original, like we did last time, again, you can definitely see more red in the tail, but I like this amount of red, to be honest with you. I do. You could easily just forego it or maybe do one drop, but I, I'm digging it. I am digging it. The green is definitely brighter on the original, and I think the red tones that down a bit with just the, the modern red that we're using, which is much more darker, deeper red than the pink that you get from the jelly red. Pretty cool stuff. Let's take a look at these side by side. All right, and there they are, side by side by side. You have the original motor oil here on the left, we have the version with the recipe that Mixmaster J gave us using the original ingredients. And then we have the recipe using the ingredients that are available today, all the revised versions of them. And you can see, I think if you tone back that red a little bit, you can easily get to where the original MF motor oil is. But look at that, that just that nice lime chartreuse green with that red poking through. Awesome, awesome stuff. There it is with the original ingredients. And then boom, right here. Pretty close. I mean, if you look at them all kind of side by side by side here, very, very subtle differences between them all. Uh, you're going to get that awesome color change no matter what from all of them. Good stuff. Such a great color in the water. And there you go. Uh, you have the recipe. You can tweak it and do with it as you like. I mean, yeah, motor oil. <laughs> What's more to say, huh? All right, so the 4.1 inch Epic Whip Wad is a pretty sweet mold. Now you can see there's a ton of detail in there, but as I mentioned earlier in the video, there's no hook slot, which means uh, we're gonna have to run this on some different jig head style baits. Not to worry though, I have several of them laid out here for you and I thought we would take a look at all the different options and the ways that I like to rig up 
the 4.1 inch Epic Whip Wad. Starting off first, here is a look at a relatively new type of way to rig. This is the TUSH by Core Tackle. TUSH stands for the ultimate swim bait hook. Uh, the model that we're using today is a 2 watt hook. Uh, it's an eighth ounce weight and you can see that it has the weight kind of in the middle of the hook. So when you feed that into the bait, the weight is kind of buried inside there. You can see it there. This causes a lot more belly roll and I find that the 2 watt size 1 8 ounce has been perfect for the uh, the 4.1 inch whip wad. I was out with Jacob into the woods custom lures a few weeks back and I was really slaying them and sticking them too once I switched over. Now the rigging definitely took a minute to get used to to get it you know on there perfectly straight. It took me two or three different times. I was a little hesitant at first about this uh, this particular rigging but once I got the way to feed it through down uh, this has proven to be very very good at the hookup ratio so you know or i should say landing ratio when i hook up with the fish getting it back to the boat haven't lost a fish yet on the tush by core tackle so definitely something i recommend you check out uh, they come in packs of three so i think it's a few dollars for a pack of three not a bad deal there and uh, you know it's going to support another youtuber and uh, i believe matt stefan uh, has a piece of that company as well so yeah Core Tackle Tush, great way to rig up the 4.1 inch Epic Whip Wad. Okay, another great way to rig this up, you already know, you saw it there, I mean, I'm gonna go for it every time, and that is going to be the Six Sense Treble Head Line Through. Fantastic way to rig up this bait. I find that the quarter ounce and the 3 8 ounce heads work best. I wouldn't really go any bigger than a 3 8 ounce head, and then a nice smaller size treble hook closer towards the front. I find this will help from the bait kind of rolling sideways. You have to be careful with the top weight here. The uh, the 4.1 inch whip wad and all the whip wads for that matter have a lot of drag because of this very whippy tail. So you want to make sure that the way that you rig it isn't going to cause your bait to be running you know sideways. The last thing you want is for your bait to be running on its side like that. You want it to run perfectly vertical with a nice you know belly roll and that's what you get here. You get the keel weighted uh, front head here that screws into the front of the bait. Line comes through, ties here to your treble hook and you are good to go. Awesome, awesome way to rig up the 4.1 inch Epic Whip Lock. Okay, so if it starts to get a little bit windy or it's hot and you gotta get a little bit of flash going, we got two options in the underspin department here for you. First up is the guppy head by Dirty Jigs Tackle, the new guppy head underspin. What I like about this is if you're doing a chuck and wind underspin, this is great because the line wire that comes down from the guppy head keeps the blade separated from the bait. So even when I hang it perfectly you know, up and down like this, you can see the blade is separated. It's not going to impede with the body. That's a problem with some of the underspins. It's hard to find some that are compatible with the whip wad because of the tail and again, all that drag that I mentioned. But the Dirty Jigs Guppy Head Underspin works fantastic. I believe this is a size one hook and this is about the smallest really that I would go. A two watt or a three watt jig head hook I think works best. That puts the hook more towards the middle of the back of the bait and in my opinion that's a better place to get a hook up because uh, for the whip wad especially they tend to go for the tail more so than they do the head. But when they swipe it directly from the side I mean that's a kill shot every time. So uh, there you go. Dirty Jigs Guppy Head. And then in addition to that, if you want to get it down a little bit deeper, fish it on the bottom, the Raid Head Swimmer Libero Head. This is the 14 gram head, half ounce. This is gonna get down for you real quick, especially if you're in current. And now remember the Head Swimmer Libero, you can also chuck and wind it, but it's really meant to be fished more like a jig. So as this thing is sitting down here, dragging across the bottom like this, this blade is spinning and it's not going to impede with the tail. That's also going to be flapping back there. So as this is kind of coming across at an angle there, you're gonna get that blade movement unimpeded by the tail and it's going to make for an awesome profile of a bait fish just kind of chugging along the bottom there. 
great, great profile. Love the Raid Head Swimmer Libero. And he got this weed guard here. I've thrown this head around lots of cover and doesn't seem to get snagged all too often. So I've been really impressed with the Raid Head Swimmer Libero. And that's a good thing because uh, these aren't cheap. All right, last but not least, my favorite is the Oka Shira screw head. However, the Okashira screw head only comes in an eighth ounce weight and this tiny, tiny one aught hook, which just isn't going to be big enough for the profile of the 4.1 inch Epic Whip Wad. It may work on some of the smaller ones, but it's not going to work on the 4.1. So this is where I like to bring in the Battle Baits Hilo head. So Battle Baits is another small pine bait maker. He's all over Instagram. I will make sure to put links to this exact tackle down below in the description. But this is the quarter ounce helo head on a three-aught hook. And you can see that with a three-aught hook, that comes out right in the middle of the back of the bait. I think this is the perfect weight and profile for a spinner head. Again, perfectly balanced spinner head. That thing spins around like crazy as it's coming through the water. 90 degree line tie here at the top. Just an awesome all round bait profile. Great way to rig it up. And the copper really matches the motor oil well. I think this is going to be an amazing way to fish this bait. Can't wait to get some action with these on the water. Okay, well you know we couldn't stop there. There was no way we were just gonna stop right there. All right, so here we have our motor oil. We took the two homemade recipes and put them together in one big giant two cup Pyrex glass right here. And uh, you know, nothing looks better in motor oil than some red flake, right? So we're gonna spruce it up a little bit. We're gonna go in on some crushed rupees with some red crushed rupees, all right? All right, so we got two cups of Plastisol here. So I'm just gonna go in heavy with two heaping sixteenths of a teaspoon in here to really, really get that flake swirled around in there. There we go. Look at that magic starting to happen. Beautiful. Look at that. Huh? Kind of gives that goldish effect to it down in there. That is looking pretty awesome. Okay, so now what I want to do to give it even some more red sheen to it. I want to go in on some solar sugar. We're going to add some solar sugar in here too. This is kind of like a red to uh, orange color shift. And uh, we got two cups, so I'm going to go one big heaping sixteenth of a teaspoon of that as well. Oh yeah, you can really see that. You can really see that. Can you take a look there? See, it's kind of got that pink, red to orange color shift going on. I think that's going to look really good in the motor oil. And uh, you know, we may come back in also with some Triton Flake because that also looks very, very good in the motor oil. So let's, let's see how this looks. We're just having fun right now. We're experimenting, having a good time. That's what it's all about. That is looking pretty good right there. My oh my. That is looking real good. So we got that red to orange shimmer hyper shift going on. But I think we're going to need some flake in there, something to break it up. So let's go ahead and add some black flake. We're going to go in and toss in some large black square glitter as well. Two heaping teaspoons of that. We'll get that mixed in there. All right, that's gonna give us some texture in the tails. And you know what? Yeah, I think, I think I wanna go in on some Triton Flake. I do. Here we go. 
Siren Scales, Triton. Going to bring that gold in there, really going to set it off. And again, we got two cups of Plastisol here, so I'm just going to do, probably going to do four scoops maybe. Three, up, 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 and four. There we go. A little extra never hurt no one. Okay, now we're definitely going to have to reheat this and then also vacuum. The siren scales have a tendency to stick together. It's unfortunate, so you really got to not only stir them in good, but it's highly recommended to make sure to vacuum your Plastisol afterwards as well. Yeah. I mean, just taking a look at it from this angle here, a little bit different than the top down, and you can see that orange to red, that black flake breaking it up, and that Triton Siren Scales in there, giving it that awesome reflectivity. Ooh, so much you can do with the motor oil. Wow, this is gonna be good. We got two molds here ready to shoot. Can't wait to see what these look like. All right, we are ready to shoot. Look at that beautiful, beautiful color. All right, here we go. Motor oil magic in the 4.1 inch whip wad in a mystery mold. Oh yeah, you can see that there on the injector. Look at all that shimmer. All that red to orange and gold shifty shift. Awesome stuff. All right, let's take a look at what these whip wads look like with his new kind of motor oil magic recipe. Oh yeah, look at those tails, huh? There we go. There we go, now that's a color. Look at that. Ooh -wee. Yeah! That is a color and a half right there. Let's get these out of the mold. Oh yeah, look at that. All that red and gold color shift. Look at that bright red and gold and then boom, disappears. Completely disappears. That's what's so awesome. But that Triton flake still shining through. Nice and chunky gold chunks in there with that pink, red, orange color shift going on. You got the bright hits of red with the uh, the crushed rupees in there. Oh yeah. Look at that. Absolutely awesome. Oh yeah, and that tail back there? Whew. Oh, that's gonna do some damage. That is gonna do some damage on the water. Yep, absolutely wonderful. Those are going to do quite well. Quite well. All right, and let's take a look at our mystery mold here. Yep, you guessed it. The glory crawl. Oh, jeez. And that's the bottom. That's the bottom side. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at that. Is that not a beautiful crawl color? Huh? Look at that shimmer and that shift. Greens and reds, golds. The black flake really adding some texture in there. I'm liking that a lot. That is good stuff. Good, good stuff. All right. I'm going to finish injecting the rest of these. We will get some close-ups and some slow-mo, and I will meet you back at the workbench.
right, buddy, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video today. I mean, the original motor oil, what, what needs to be said? There it is. The recipe, after all these years, is finally out there in the open. Special thank you to Mixmaster J over at MF Manufacturing for providing this to the community. I know this is going to go down as probably one of, if not the best, custom bait making colors of all time. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we got lots more to come. And make sure to smack that thumbs up because if we hit 500 likes, you know what's next the original MF Blue Craw. Until next time, y'all know who it is, your friend on this end, Michael out here around these Delta Slews, reminding you to keep on chucking. I'll get back with you.